During the second half of the 19th century, ambitious American architectural students began to attend the National School of Fine Arts in Paris. They started an art movement that took the United States by storm alongside Art Deco and Art Nouveau, which we have previously discussed on this channel. Hello everyone and welcome to Art Anime. In this video, we will go over certain aspects of the Beaux-Arts architecture, including its origin, characteristics, and when did it come to an end. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to not miss out on any future videos and now let us investigate. Origin. In French, the term Beaux-Arts means fine arts or beautiful arts. It was because of American architects who have attended the Beaux-Arts Institution, one of the oldest and elite schools of architecture and design in Paris, and brought the French ideas with them that the United States managed to be introduced to this new style. It was sometimes called the American Renaissance that raged for stately Roman architecture that came to the United States. It is like American architects started putting little Romans everywhere. Beaux-Arts was a popular but short-lived movement in the United States. Lasting roughly from 1885 to 1925, it spanned a period of almost the late 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century where great industrial revolution was taking place around the world. Everyone wanted to build under this style. You name it, official buildings, state capitals, courthouses, even lodge halls. This style provided some rich and compelling ornaments for American cities and towns. Characteristics. Both are is characterized by order, symmetry, formal designs, and elaborate or ornamentation. Interiors are often polished and elaborately ornamented with statues and medallions. And the exteriors are huge in their symmetry. The Beaux-Arts style in the United States resulted its plant communities with enormous, extravagant houses, wide boulevards, and expensive parks. For example, in Washington, D.C., Beaux-Arts was used in the Union Station by architect Daniel H. Burnham and the Library of Congress Thomas Jefferson Building on Capitol Hall. Their general defining elements include coupled columns, symmetrical articulation, lavish and intensive surface decoration, an active roofline of classical with dramatic rooftop. The buildings they designed conveyed a sense of heaviness and honored the history of ancient ideals. This style is definitely extravagant in nature. It takes the cues from classical and Greek Roman principles and incorporates decorative French and Italian Renaissance and Baroque influences. When did it come to an end? Architecture critic Ada Louise Huxtable wrote in a New York Times article over the past 50 years, Beaux-Arts has become a bad word, for this is the large slice of architecture history and the large part of the civilized world, which the modern mo movement exorcised. It is, in fact, what modern architecture rebelled against. Architects of the newly born modernist movement pointed out Beaux-Arts' reliance on Roman ruins for inspiration and its extravagant use of decoration. They also rejected the strict teaching of the École. This devotion to Rome stifled individual creativity. By the 1930s, new styles emerged, such as Art Deco and Art Nouveau and Modernism. Beaux-Arts architects experimented with new engineering techniques and created a whole lot of an innovative building. This style brought an element of order and planning to American townscapes. More importantly, it brought a strong measure of learning, vulnerability, and social standing to the American profession of architecture. We have now reached the end of today's video. We hope that we gave you a general brief on the Beaux-Arts architecture. Let us know in the comments which styles of architecture you would like us to discuss next. Make sure to subscribe to not miss out on any of our future videos. Thank you so much and we will see you in the next one.